Welcome to My Long Island TV. From Manhasset to Montauk, we have traveled our communities to bring you the following events. I'm your host, Waldo Cabrera. My Long Island TV starts now. As a valued member of our family of volunteers, you all are making a real difference in the lives of many, many people from all walks of life. This is part of our National Volunteer Awareness and Thankful Week. Um, our volunteers are the backbone of our Holocaust Memorial and Tolerance Center. They're involved in every single aspect of what we do, whether it's providing content, providing programs, uh, working in our library, helping with our Children's Memorial Garden, helping the front office staff, um, helping on events, fundraisings, etc. Without them, um, we would not be the organization that we are today. Over the last 10 years, we've seen this museum go from a, um, a mom and pop kind of exhibit uh, to having raised millions of dollars to do this beautiful multi-million dollar um, installation that you see today. Um, and we've grown in leaps and bounds and every year uh, we continue to reach more and more kids. Um, last year alone was 38,000 I think I had mentioned. We saw over 600 uh, police and law enforcement personnel last year with specialized programs. We also are privileged to have among our volunteers Holocaust survivors themselves and their background is really quite varied. We have people who were hidden children, people who were um, su survived via the kinder transport. We have uh, people who are uh, uh, concentration camp and death camp survivors. Uh, in addition to um, these wonderful volunteers, we also have uh, some people who are uh, who were involved in the military, the United States military at that time, and were involved in liberating the concentration camps t towards the end of the war. The first camp I helped liberate was called Ordruff. It was a labor camp. The second camp I helped liberate was Bergen-Belsen, which is a, one of the more horrible camps. And uh, there are not enough words in Webster's Dictionary to describe the joy of the people coming out and regaining their freedom that they had lost for so many years. I volunteer because I want the young people today to know what happened during one of the darkest periods of world history. Uh, they don't learn this in their history books or see this on film. It's when they see a, a liberator or survivor speaking personally about what they encountered, they know exactly what happened in World War II. We're doing a ring around the rosy at recess and this little girl whose father was a Nazi, which of course I didn't know, uh, she wanted me to hold her hand. I didn't want to hold her hand. She was very, very dirty. So anyway, I didn't want, so she, all of a sudden she starts yelling, you dirty Jew, you dirty Jew. She must have heard that in the household, not that she knew what that even meant. And I really do not like to relive those times because emotionally it's very taxing. And I do have many, many health issues because of World War II. And uh, my children, you know, are very concerned about me. I've been in the hospital in and out. And uh, so, um, but I feel it's a worthwhile price to make it a better world. This is an environment that is very precious. People talk naturally of bullying, of intolerance. There are police being trained here. It's a very positive, helpful, wonderful kind of environment that inspires all of us. I am an Auschwitz survivor. I just went through the Holocaust from September 1st, 1939 to the very end, the beginning of May 1945. I gladly, very gladly, give my time to speak, to educate young and older. Everybody shall know what Hitler and the Nazis did to the Jews in general, to all these people, 11 million people died on the battlegrounds. 
And so we shall all learn for what happened it shall never ever happen again nowhere to nobody